Hi everyone and happy new year to you all. We hope you've had a great Christmas, new year, and most importantly of all, a great break. This is Aussie Tech Heads. Thanks to all of you who are sending your best wishes to us all. Uh, we appreciate them, so thank you. Yes, we are back. We are back for another full-on year, 2013. Geez, that goes fast, doesn't it? Garth will be back. The head will return at some stage. Don't know when it will be, but he will be back. Uh, we haven't seen him for a while since he's had the operation to allow him to wear thongs, but all is well, and he will be back sometime <laughs> in the year. So all is not lost. Our webpage hosting is continuing to grow. And thank, and thank you to all of you who have put your personal blog or business and trust with our fast, super secure Aussie services. If, you, uh, if you're looking for a great, fast, affordable web hosting of any size, go to the aussietechheads.com.au forward slash hosting and check out the plans. If you don't see something you like, drop us an email at sales at aussietechheads.com.au and we'll sort it out for you. So uh, get started. Welcome to the lounge. The lounge, is everyone having a good time out there? The, the lounge is in place is the place to, uh, to watch us live, record the show each Thursday night, 7.30 Queensland time, other states, check out the website and you will find the other times there as well. Tech Webcast, another great uh, podcast, Australian podcast, each week has a guest on. Previous guests have included Tom Merritt, Robble Scoble, Kelly Lewis, wow, to name the most well-known. But join them before us each Thursday night or subscribe to them, techwebcast.info. Now, now look, more of a bit of a, more serious now, I don't think you'd have to be a dinky die if you are... Uh, if you if you wasn't shocked at the passing of uh, Tony Gregg uh, last week, uh, for me oh what a marvelous shot! Yes, for me he he has been one of the voices of summer for thirty years, probably yes. made even more famous by the Twelfth Man, which I'm sure yep. most of us have heard. Um, yep. And um, yes, so phrases such as "blow it out your ass, ball," and for "blow it out your ass, ball," <laughs> for starters you can have the marvelous, board. marvelous, and for starters you can have the busted board from this part of the broadcast <laughs> area. <laughs> And and the car park's full, and there's going to be plenty of carnage here today, and plus many more. They're, they're great. So I think if you're old enough, uh, uh, because a little bit of swearing in it, go grab it from your collection, listen to it over the next couple of days as you watch the final test in Sydney. So there you go. I actually forgot how many of the 12th Man stuff there was. <laughs> there's, there's heaps of them. Five albums. There's about five, yeah. five or six. There's, there's heaps of them. Five there's four normal albums, and then there's like two or three White. specials. Yeah, there's a wild this world. This is your life. And 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 yeah. yeah, they're all. Well, I met Tony, Tony. I met Tony Gregg when I was fifteen when he was doing uh, the Nutrigrain ads. Remember those? Oh yes, yes. And, um, you know, they're great when you have to eat and run, whatever the hell he says it. <laughs> and uh, yeah. and uh, yeah, he was. Uh, he gave us a pep talk in mm. our because we were in the finals of the uh, school rep cricket thing, whatever. And uh, he gave us a came on, took time out of his day. Nice. Nineteen. This is just during the World Series cricket uh, era. It was nineteen seventy eight. Yep, and he took, took time out of his day with with Keza and came yeah, to our right. school. Kerry, big bloke, six six point six. Kerry Packer, six 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 foot. Yeah, he took yeah. time out because he was very closely aligned with Packer. Extremely. So he took time yeah. time out of his day from Kerry to come to our school, and gave us a pet talk. He was there for a couple of hours, and he left. Yeah, nice. So oh, very fond memories of uh, Mr. A J A W Greg. Mm. I AJ never Greg is it A J Greg or A W Greg? I'm not sure. I think it might be W. I think I don't know. But uh, yeah, so like you know that the, the yes yeah, shocking news. It took me aback when I heard the news. Oh, it took me back. I couldn't believe it. And I, no, and I thought no. to myself, another good one's gone. Yeah, sixty six. It's not. It's not old. It's not old. But like not old at all. <laughs> and, and, and there's a few out there that uh, should be gone. And I'm not. So <laughs> yeah. that's what that's what annoys me. Yeah, yeah. Look, he was, yeah, he was, um, he was good. You know, like yeah, I watched the cricket today. You know, they did it. They did a, a very this yeah, was the first, too, first yep. day of the Sydney Test. And look, they they made a they made a good effort out there. Um, uh, they introduced the cricket with the you know the fly over Sydney and round Bondi. That was obviously a, it was just a pre-recorded one from a, a year or so back. Tony introducing the the city of Sydney. Uh, yeah, mm. he's just the voice of summer. He's um, my favourite piece would be if if I, I I picked one out and and it, and coincidentally was the same as Bill Laurie's. It was the Shane Warne hat trick. I, I thought that, that always stuck in my mind. Yep. He was the commentator when the Shane Warne got his hat trick. Went off like a, yep. a pork chop and uh, yeah, it was great. It was great. So um yeah yeah bad luck tone but it is a shame it is a shame massive shame he's a good guy yeah yeah all right so um so we'll leave that with that and uh, so we welcome the panel that was Eric that we were just having a chat to you heard Will in the background there Hello. as well and somewhere around here Will are you, you're there aren't you 
I'm uh, hanging around as long as my computer does. And how, how, so your computer <laughs> caught on fire last time we, we spoke and you the dropped off. The flaming Wilkinson. <laughs> Only some of it. <laughs> right. So uh, it's all, it's, is it, are you on the same computer or you, you've updated? Yeah, I've got like two desk fans pointing into the thing. It, it's had it. It really has. But it's got to wait till uh, tax return. Right, right. <laughs> well, that's only six months off. So, so, so there yeah, you go. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and Shane, how are you doing? Hey, people, how are we? Good, good. So you had a good break over there in Perth. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. It was um, a little. They're still the going. It's still Christmas Day in Perth <laughs> because they're a fair way behind us. Yeah, it's been pretty hot over yeah, there, hasn't it? Yeah, um, we had a week of you know high thirties, couple of forty, forty twos kind of thing. Ooh. I think I think uh, it's coming help. for us too. I hear Sydney's going to miss the high ones, but I think we're getting a couple. Yeah, of, baby. Yeah, we're getting yeah. a couple of four, uh, 40, 40 ones, I think. Um, yeah, yeah good. we can hack it. Yeah, we can hack it. We can handle it. Now, um, where where are we up to? We're going to. Uh, I don't know. If you want to contact us, you can uh, contact us at Glenn, Will, Eric, or Shane at AussieTechHeads dot com. There you go. There you go. Just in case you want to. Uh, now let's get into some stories. Where are we going to? St- oh, well, let's let's start with Shane's uh, this. For, or fortnight in tech history, we won't probably do all those. Shano, we'll pick a couple out. Which one? Which ones interest you? Interest you the most? Um, the only reason why I actually added the second week is because I thought the week that we missed was actually more exciting than the week that we just lived through. All right, <laughs> well, yeah, do, do those ones then. <laughs> all right, so we will go back. Actually, I'll just go back to the twentieth, and then you just stop me when you get bored. All right, short, uh, short and sharp. <laughs> The 20th of right, December. So, oh, all the way back there. Okay, yes. Yeah, so I'll go 2020. I'll count up instead of counting down. All right, so on the 20th of December, science lo- loses its most visible public champion, Carl Sagan, dies. And this is 1996. Uh, that was 1996, yes. Um, and if I just click on the story. Who was Carl Sagan? Bas- Who was he? Carl Sagan was he's basically a, like a PR figure for the, um, the science fraternity. He was, um, yeah, he wasn't the smartest scientist, and he wasn't the. He was kind of a jack of all trades when it comes to science. You could say he was like a. Uh, nah, he was just more of a personality than a brainiac. Can you have a dumb scientist? Is there such a thing? Is there such a being? Yeah, no, that's probably an oxymoron. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So he's the PR. He was a PR scientist, Carl Sagan. All right. Yeah. Like, he's kind of like the the doctor, you know, the doctor Carl, or that they have on Sunrise. Oh yeah. He's kind of, I'm Kuzinitsky. Guy. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. He's got a good podcast. I like it. Listen to him. He's good. All right, so moving on. Yes, next next one you took your fancy. Right, so just moving on to the next one, which is the 21st. Birth of a anarchist and Darwin critic, uh, some Russian guy, um, was born on December 21, 1842. He was... Um, uh, Again, another scientist kind of guy, and um, he didn't believe in the the Darwin three theory of evolution. Will he be wrong? Um, yes, he would be. What's the, he, what's the uh, his name was Peter Alexievich Kropotkin. Krop, Kropotkin. Kropotkin. Peter Alexievich Kropotkin. So he he, he believed in evolution. No, he did not believe in no. evolution. Right, he believed. He bagged it. He believed in the. Yeah, I think he, he was a flat earth theorist, wasn't he, Shane? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Right. Yeah. So he, he'd be wrong. He, he'd be very wrong. <laughs> right. Now, uh, December 24, 1968. Christmas Eve greetings from the lunar orbit. Uh, Apollo 8 um, was obviously cruising around the moon around about that time, and uh, they sent a, a Christmas Eve kind of greeting to um, the rest of the world. Yeah. If in fact they were, if in fact they were really in space. <laughs> yeah, oh, a... Mark, Mark, come on! <laughs> now, uh, what's the next one? Next stop, <laughs> December twenty-five, two thousand and four. Titan, Titan, Saturn's largest moon. Next stop. Yes. All right, let's see so that. That is basically when I think I don't want to say whether it was Voyager or. One, One of them. them. I'm waiting for the story to actually catch up. Basically, that was the day they um, launched. Uh, oh no, it was Cassini. Uh, the Cassini mission to um, I don't know whether it was actually to land on Titan or just to kind of cruise past and do a couple of laps to sort of um, yeah, in investigate it and, and check it out. All right, and uh, where's the, the last one? December 26, 1982. Times 
top man of the year, man, person of the year, man of the year. Who was it? The personal. Yeah, it was the um, PC, personal computer. Caused a bit of an uproar at the time because it wasn't actually a person that got chosen. Um, right. It's up there with the, yeah, the, the. It's up there with the person of the year was you. It was up there with that sort yeah. of. Yeah, wasn't it? That was. The, I think that was a bit silly as well. But um, right. yeah, exactly. I didn't get my picture on the front, so who cares? Now there's yeah. another. There's another one there, just up there, January first, eighteen oh one. That's a, now. That's an early one. It's the first asteroid is discovered by Italian astronomer Giuseppe Piazzi. Now. When you when you say discovered, you know it's it's always been there. It must have been identified. Um, uh, you know, well, uh, yeah, probably uh, spotted, identified, and tracked. I suppose, mm. maybe. Mm. So so all the way back then, I wonder how close it. Wonder how close it was being. They wouldn't have been able to see too far away, would they? Back then, eighteen oh one. No, so um, they, had, they had good eyes, mate. It would have, would have been in close shave, I reckon. Well, from from what I hear, they eat a lot of carrots back then. So, I reckon, <laughs> reckon they must have. You know, eyes. you know that's a big furphy. You know where that actually comes from? Rabbits. I actually asked someone about this. A, rabbits, a the rabbits said it. Yeah, probably rabbits. Carrot farmers. <laughs> That's right. They, yeah, I mean rabbits do eat like carrots, a lot of carrots, but it's because of the way their lights, uh, their eyes shine at night or something, and people just kind of made the conclusion that if you eat a lot of carrots, you'll mm. sleep well at night. Mm, mm. Big lot of crap. Yeah, now Will, what have you been? What are you up to over there? You got any? Um, you can you can stick kick off with a with a story if you like. I've uh, or, or I've actually been looking through the the uh, the Android news and stuff as which is I'm I'm one want to do. There really isn't much happening since Christmas. It, no, <laughs> the market, it's slow. The tech news is really. It's like you know the whole world goes on holiday. However, mm. I uh, yeah. I had a, uh, an argument with Telstra t- today saying that they need to give me a new phone or I'm going to leave them because I'm now, I've been 18 months into a two year contract and both the previous phones I had have basically died. So I said to them, look, you can either can the contract and I'll get two new phones today or in six months' time I'll just go to Optus. Good and luck so with that. They, <laughs> they told me I could get two new phones. They go. So, they go out the back and scoff. Oh, what do you so, got? So, um, we I got the Note Two. Ooh. Uh, actually, got two of them. One for me, and one for Sam. Uh, this thing is fantastic. Like, it's a quad core, one point six, um, mega uh, gigahertz processor. Well, it was funny when I was. I actually got it from JB, and when I was there waiting uh, in line, uh, I actually put uh, my old. HTC Desire inside the new iPhone screen and then the new iPhone went inside the old Galaxy Note screen. The old Galaxy Note went inside this screen (laughs) and this one goes inside my um, Galaxy Tab screen. (laughs) Wow. So, you know, it's actually quite amazing. It's decent. It's five and a half inch. Um, It does some really fantastic stuff. One of the things that I love about it, if I can figure this out, is uh, it's an AMOLED screen, so it displays easily on camera. Um, and also, you can do this really cool thing where you can you've got a, a sidebar on it, and then let's say we'll pick uh, Facebook as our main app. So Facebook loads up, and then I can drag that sidebar back across again, and I can press and hold on say Gmail, and then I can drag it to be half the screen. So I can have Facebook on the top and Gmail on the bottom. Oh yeah, that's, that's like a cool. Windows operating system, Split and it's screen. actually powerful enough that I can play 1080p video on the top screen, and I can record 1080p video on the bottom screen. Yeah, that's not too bad. That's all right. But um, you know, um, so yeah, I mean, the size obviously is an issue for some people. Five and a half inch is a pretty big screen. It is really thin. It's incredibly thin. Hang on, thin. Hang on my Galaxy enough. Notes ringing. <laughs> um, but hello. Um, because I've got bigger hands, it's not a problem for me, and it actually it's better for me, especially because I, if I use it in landscape mode to type on, is really good. Um, you know, Here's my Galaxy Note. It's um, <laughs> having used the Galaxy Tab seven inch as a phone for a while because the, our phones died. This is a downgrade, <laughs> so. 
Um, it, it is a little bit obscure to actually talk on, but I don't really do that because I have the Bluetooth in the car and I have the Bluetooth normally anyway. So to actually hold it up to your head to talk on, mm. um, but because it's so thin, it's it sort of not you don't notice it that much. Well, it's I, got. Uh, <clears throat> I had a, I got yep. a new phone through the week, by not by mm. choice. Um, if you're following on. Uh, well, I don't know if I posted on Facebook or whatever, but uh, about a month ago I dropped my phone and it landed on its point, on the bottom point there. And look, I put a little scratch, a little ding in the uh, earphone socket, and then did you not have a did you not have a cover, Glenn? I do have a cover, and I, if I can, you dropped it with the cover on it. Yes, if I can show you, if this will hmm. come out, you can Interesting. see this is the same old cover, and it's got the dings in the cover. But it still, right. it still managed to ding the phone. So it must have just, I think, because the driveway is, um, is pebbles, so it's obviously just stuck, it's just caught the edge of a pebble. And it's just, um, but anyway, so the speaker stopped working. And I thought, oh, that's no good because I can't hear anything, <laughs> you know, when it rings or whatever. So then I thought, That's well, perfect when your wife rings. You can just keep talking. Well, that's right. And I had been. And she's going, why aren't you answering? And I went, oh, okay. So, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> I went, Dolt, now I'm going to have to fix it. And uh, so anyway, so I thought, okay, let me see if the phone's broken or if it's just a speaker, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I went to put the headphones in. And when I put the headphones in, it was a tight, 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 tight fit. I had to get a, a, a I had to ply the headphones out. It was that tight. So obviously it, there was something going on. It was broke. Anyway, went to the Apple store and they just go, um, they looked at it and I went, well, it's a speaker. Like, can you just go and put another speaker in it for us? And they said, no, nah, it's got, uh, it's got notable physical damage, which, uh, uh, void your warranty or whatever it was, you're going to have to get a... Like, I think you got stuck with the wrong bloke because most Apple guys are quite um, flexible with that mm. and they should have given you a replacement for free. Because, you know, like, I had a cover on it. I had the, the, the screen on so I looked after it. It was just... Look, I, I jumped out of the car and I, and I had... St- stuff in the car and I've had a, I put a, you know, you stand at the door of your car, you put a box in your hand, you put a, another box on top of it, I put my wallet on top of top of it, the keys, and I put the phone on it. So a little, it was, it was a little tower, and but it was manageable, so I thought, and then I must have turned or did something and the phone just slipped right off and, um, yeah, just uh, tilted that bit of, you know, bit of, on that slight angle, it went off. But anyway, so he goes, 270 bucks, I have to get a new phone. But, you know, it's better than paying 800 I suppose. But, um, but yeah, look, I wasn't, as, I wasn't the happiest in the world. Uh, it, I, I believe it had other issues as well. Um, one of the other issues was it wouldn't connect, it wouldn't detect in iTunes. And I didn't really think about it until I got the new phone because I thought, well, that's probably a Windows thing. You know, this computer I'm running on here hasn't been formatted for probably two years, two and a half years. And I just thought, well, and iTunes has been up graded probably from version 9 over the time and I thought oh well it's just getting you know chunky it's, it's clunky uh, but now I've got the new I've got this new phone it hasn't missed a beat iTunes connects straight away so oh look I don't know yeah I, I, sounds I, like there was something in, with the phone you know it's probably happened when you got it the Telstra or the courier whoever it was probably dropped it mm, well you know maybe maybe but it's done now I wasn't I wasn't the happiest but Anyway, look, but which comes to, comes to me, because I, I know people that have gone into Apple with a cracked screen, with a smashed screen, you yeah. know. I put my hand up twice, Yeah, freebies. And, yeah, yeah, which leads me to think, and this is what I was saying uh, to you before the show, that leads me to wonder if they don't go out the back. I don't even believe this guy opened it up. I don't even believe he did that. I think they go No, out, they don't. They don't. They see, they go out, they, what they do is they look at it and go, well, that's it. We can't open it up. They don't open it up. As soon as there's something wrong with it on the surface, they, they pretty much know whether or not um, it can be fixed. Because I asked them when I had my screen break, I said, hang on a minute, and he went out the back, and I thought he was fixing, he was popping off the screen, mm. right? Yeah. And he said, no, we, just, we put it out the back, and what we're doing at the back is we're actually packaging it up to go and get refurbished, and then he comes out and pulls my, a refurbished one out of the drawer behind him and gives me that. Yes, yes. Don't, so, as soon as they can see physical damage, they don't even open it. Yeah. It's not worth their time. Yeah, well, obviously not if you're going to pay, if you've got some Gumby to pay for another one. But, uh, but which leads me to, to wonder is that they don't go out the back. They've got their computer, 
And like, so Eric, you know, full on Apple guy, right? And this other person I know that had the smash screen, full on Apple girl. Uh, and I think. Uh, oh, they must might they might look at your record and see how much you bought, bought exactly, for them. Exactly, exactly. I think that they're looking at a relationship history. And, yeah, and how, yeah. yeah, because like apps I download are free apps. You know, I don't actually don't buy. It. <laughs> I don't buy. I, I use, I've got that apps gone free. I only download them when they're free. You know, uh, oh, if, if I need so he's something, got, he's I'll, gone. You got a cheapskate coming, so we'll, he's going to have to pay for his. Yep, yeah, I, I, I think that's what's going on out the back, uh, amongst some other personal gratification. I think that's what's going on, <laughs> and. Um, yeah, and <laughs> I just got that. <laughs> so, I, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, because, you know, I've got the Mac Mini and I've got the um, uh, Apple TV and the airport, but that's about it. And so it's probably not a big enough... No, well, know, yeah, that's right. Draw. Yeah. But, you know, Eric, you know, you're doing music and your apps and, you know... You, you're, well, we've got heaps of music, lots of movies, lots of apps, yep. lots of uh, TV shows. Yep. Um, one, I've got one, two, three, four Macs in the house... There's five, four iPads mm. and five iPhones. So. so that's what's going on. That's my theory. And uh, You might be right. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. <laughs> All right. No, I think you're right. I will, I, will, I will not be betting against you. Yeah, because I know like, from my time in, when I was working in the bank, you know, someone comes in for a bit of a favour, like they, they want to overdraw their account or whatever. For, you know, they say, oh, I want to cash a cheque. I'm a bit short this month. Well, you look at their overall history. You know, you go, well, yeah. oh, he wants to overdraw his account $3,000. Well, let him. We've got his mortgage on his house. <laughs> like he's not going that's anywhere. Right. Let him. That's so, right. You've got a history. He's always, he's, yeah. you know, he's always in credit for most for the most part. And yeah, he's right. got lots of lots of uh, security and there. So yeah, back. go for your life. Because I used to I used to sit there in bewildered. I was I was pretty up with all that. I go, oh, well, we got the mortgage, so give it to him. That's that's fine, yeah. you know. Because because yeah, the tellers had to come and get it authorized and everything. But you see the other yeah. the other like well, I don't know, supervisor, whatever you want to call them, and they they'd be just hard asses, you know. They go no, and I'm going well. Why wouldn't you? you yeah, know, like, kill, why, yeah. Why wouldn't you? Good way of killing killing the relationship, isn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah. That's right. So anyway, anyway. Uh, now let's have it. While we're talking about Apple, uh, Eric, you had a story there about the Apple App Store. What's going on? Uh, yeah, Apple App Store. <laughs> yes, I'll do. You want me to start with that one or the one prior oh, you, to that? You start with whatever one you would like. Oh, Is that right. the highest? No, not that one. That's mm. the actual that one's store. coming. Uh, rumors, people close to the sources said iPhone 6 to come out in 6 to 8 colours with NFC, question mark, 128 gigabyte of storage, question mark. Mm. Now, I'll just read a little snippet. I don't know if this is going to make such a big deal. Apple could launch its 7th generation iPhone dubbed iPhone 6 or iPhone 5S in June or July next year with several improvements and new features including NFC, 128 gigabytes of storage and a choice of 6 to 8 colours. Wow. Now, I'm a bit... Look, the six to eight colours I think will go well because a lot of the, the the girlies will want it, and you know, and and you know, girls, boys, and everyone in between might sort of like that. But, but is with, it? I was just going to say, sorry, I was just going to say, uh, is the colours? Do you think such a, a really big thing when people just buy covers anyway, cases anyway? So well, they do, but it's I look in the end, I think it's just a, it's a it's a it's a gimmick yeah. because they know I think they know that they've flogged the dead horse out of the white and black. You know, and people, and they, and and you know, that's a mature market now. You know, there's yep. not much more you can get out of that. Mm. So we'll just up it a little bit, bit of a gimmick. You yep. know. Yep. And yep. agree. Oh, look, NFC. I don't, I don't. I think that'll probably come out the the generation after because you know Apple. Are, they like they like uh, drip feeding features. Mm. That's mm. part of the, what oh, they do. That's got NSC too. The the note. I only just yeah. found that out. Didn't realise. But then again, but not only that. There's not many. Not many people are uh, retailers or or other sort of people are using it yet. So they'll, they'll probably watch that closely and see what happens. But with the 20, 128 gigabytes of storage, in this day and age, look, five years ago, when they came out with the iPhone 1, the one that only came out in the States in 2007, and so they said 128 gigabytes storage and that thin, everyone was going, oh, you beauty, because you need all that storage for your songs and everyone's ripping CDs and into iTunes and transferring it onto their iPods or iPhones and as the case may be, but now you can stream things. You can, you know, mm. you, you don't need to have all your songs on your device. I certainly don't. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because on the iTunes app on the iPhone, you can see your movies on there and just press play and stream it into your phone from 
um, the, the big data center in yeah. North Carolina. So I'm not sure that this 128 gigabyte story. Well, I've got the 64 gigabyte one on my iPhone here, and I've got 42 gigabytes left. I don't know what to yeah, put. Yeah, I mean the biggest thing now is everything records HD video, you know, and um, to it's give you good an for example, that sort of stuff. If you're recording videos, it's good for that. 1080p. Um, this is a 1080p little handy cam thing. It does uh, eight uh, eight gig in two hours. So yeah. you know, if you're recording, you don't even have to record a lot. If you record, you know, ten minutes here and there, you you are. Oh yeah, you can add it. It all adds up. That's right. So it's good for that. But, but that's I don't think the it, only real. Yeah, correct. I agree. Yeah, I think so. That again, that could be just a gimmick, just I to th- get people to buy this. Like, oh, more room, I'll get one. You don't need it. I think though that your NFC thing, I think that could be closer than what you. Th- Think I think that it will be in the next one because um, Shane, you pulled out a story there about phone payments and um, and how they're coming soon to to Australia. Did you want to elaborate on that, or do you want me to keep going with that? I one? did. Um, it wasn't one of the ones you highlighted, but that's right. I found it. Um, oh yeah, so it's just exactly what you said. It's a story that I stumbled across. Australian telcos are ramping up plans to enable customers to pay for goods um, by swiping their phones. Um, it goes on to sort of say that that technology is NFC. Um, so there's a prediction. Telstra and Vodafone. Yeah, I was yeah. going to read that. Yeah. <laughs> Telstra, and, <laughs> Telstra and Vodafone uh, predict that we will change into uh, 2013 um, with far more NFC-enabled devices uh, coming into the market. Um, it's been promised for a long time. Um, N- NFC has been um, a slow burn, but it's likely to become uh, an enriched next year, I mean, meaning 2013, meaning this year. Mm. Um, so, yeah, Vodafone. Vodafone. Yeah, pretty- I'm worried about the security issues of that. Um, you know, someone yeah. just probably grabs it's hold of no your phone. different just- than, uh, than your credit swipe credit cards. It's the well, same. Well, I'm worried about the security yeah, well, issues of that. Because sort of that reminded me of the. <laughs> I went to Coles this afternoon to get some ingredients for, and, you know, some bits and pieces for the house. Um, ingredients for, you know, we made some pizza. And, you know, mm, yum, yum. And it came to $84. And I, I haven't been to the supermarket for a while, so I, I told my wife, look, I'll go and get the stuff, you know, you just relax and whatnot. And, and I put my card through, it was $84, all up. And the receipt just pops out, didn't sign anything. Well, mm. If someone stole my card, go nuts. Yeah, well, so it's a dollar limit. Or just, or you... So I swiped it, I swiped it in, but oh, yeah, she didn't ask me for a signature or a pin or anything. It, the yeah, receipt just printed out and said approved. Most places are forty bucks, like takeaways and stuff. Um, I think Coles but, is a hundred. Yeah, they're a hundred. Coles and Woolies are a hundred. I mean, Petrol. if someone's going to steal your card, they're probably not going to go and buy a hot chook, you know. <laughs> so generally, it's not. <laughs> I really tell you what, if a, if a poor person if a poor person robs you and they're hungry, the first yeah. place you'd go is Coles and Woolies. <laughs> you know, really. I mean, that's right. I mean, there is a pattern to recognition to help that too, like. Uh, the latest one is if you if card gets stolen, or if even if you do it, if you go shopping and then you get fuel, you can get your card suspended because that's what most people do when they swipe a card. When they swipe petrol, a card. Yeah, the petrol is a big one when you when you nick cards. That's true. Mm. But, but I think yeah, it just it um, sort of it sort of took took me aback, and I thought I'm no I'm no fuddy duddy. I, you know, I like technology as much as the next guy, but so, you know I'm gonna, I'm starting to sound like Steve Gibson here. <laughs> But I, I but think. I mean, uh, look, I, I can just you think imagine that, that like, instead of carrying a wallet, instead of carrying, you know, actual cash because that's useless anyway. Um, I like you cash. actually. You, you mm. just carry. I mean, so do I. But you just carry your phone. You haven't got to write credit cards. Or, but you know what's your, next? You know, you know what's next? From scammers. The scam. You know they've got they've got those ATM um, scammers. Skimmers. Those skimmers. Right. The next yeah. thing is they'll be walking up behind you with they a do. reader they and, do. Just, and just milking, anyway. milking your yeah, bloody yeah, money. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. the thing is they've got to be literally they have to touch it. If you have a magnetic case with a magnetic latch between this and where they read, they can't read the signal. Oh, um, yeah, but I'm not going to get a magnetic case for my phone before you know I've no, got lead poisoning and my old fella's <laughs> fallen off. <laughs> but what I'm saying is like a lot of people carry these in the top pocket. It's most people now tend to carry their phones in the top pocket. I've noticed. Actually, I think I'd need um, a briefcase for that. <laughs> and, you know, because of that. And the thing is, you can, with the phone as well, you can turn the NFC off. So if you know you're not using it, you turn it well, off. Well, that's it true. You can turn it off and you just turn it on when you're going to use it and then turn it back off again. And so if you don't is, forget if to you, do that, that's If that's you've fine. got your phone, you know, instead of having a credit card that can be skimmed or three, 
a bank card, uh, you know, whatever, a library card, a, a gym membership card, anything that uses, you know, that to get you in. Uh, even the RF cards used to get in your parking garages, things like that. If that's all on your phone and all on one device, the chances of you losing it and the chances of it being stolen are greatly reduced instead of having 30 different cards. But what if you get your phone stolen? Then you lose everything. Well, not if you have it turned off with... Well, how many you, times you have, have, have pissed idiots it's left their phone in a cab? I mean, <laughs> Here. Well, do you have a password on your lock screen? Um, no. Yeah, well, probably should. but most, if you had that, if you're using that sort of thing as you your primary have to. device, you would yeah. have a password on. Yeah. Well, I think now the other thing is for you, for you, me, and you know, you, Will, and me, and Glenn and Shane, um, because you know, we'd like we'd like to think that we know a little bit about technology, and we would do things like turn it off when you're not using it, blah blah blah. Yeah. But for the mainstream, they're not going to have a the the, the foggiest. No. They're no. just be going, oh yeah, great, and well, you get you get some little bloke. Some little pygmy bloke going up behind you, skimming your ass with uh, a skimmer for your NFC. What are you right? doing? Just walking up behind oh, you in Disneyland or oh. something like that. <laughs> and just, you know, just... A lot of those people aren't going to be using that technology anyway because they're not going to know about it. So, well, I don't know. Yeah, it, that's the Russians know going, about it. That sort of thing is going to be, you know, really opening that divide up that, that's happening at the moment. Instead of people who kind of know a bit using phones, they'll still use the phone, but they won't program the NFC. They won't, you know, I mean... Look, for it, some reason... The, yes, it's the, a risk, but then again, anything... So as I said, it, what's the difference? If someone's going to steal it, they're going to steal your phone or they're going to steal your wallet and your phone. I mean, it's not going to make any difference at the end of the day. For some reason... Yeah, look, look it'll, it will evolve. Sorry, Glenn. It will evolve over time, and I'm sure there will be certain measures put in and there will be certain education that will have to be carried out in order for people to, you know, like anything, use it safely. But that reminds you know. me too, there is, just quickly, sorry, Glenn. <laughs> yeah, shut up, Glenn. <laughs> um, there is actually apps I have seen that use the NFC and GPS and public Wi-Fi hotspots and tower location to make sure you at a location that you've said that you can use it at. So you could set it to say... Oh, yeah, but who's going to do that? Say, Robbie, that's what say, I, well, I know, but I'm just saying, you can set it to say Woolworths at Beval. That's the only place I can use it. So... Unless I'm there, I can't use it. You know what I mean? So there are some safeguards in place. Can yeah, I I'll just stick to the, I'll just stick to the black MX, I think. <laughs> My turn? Yeah, sorry, mate. Go ahead. You're only the editor and, and well, producer of the show. Look, Say I, something. For, for whatever weird reason, the banks are, pu are pushing all this technology, right? It's not, it's not, I don't think it's any, we're not pushing oh, it's it. It's not a weird reason, it's mate. A, it's less work for them to do. Oh, yeah. oh Why? What put a pin because number in? Because it's less processing for them. If you if you don't have to sign something, if you don't have to do this, you know, it's just less less man hours for them. No, oh, nah, bugger it. But I reckon. Look, <laughs> I think that it's, it's safe enough. I think it's, it's it's good enough because they're obviously underwriting the issues. I think we just got to keep a close eye on the terms and conditions of these cards and uh, make sure yes. that you know they they're not going to change without us really realizing it. So that's the thing. Yeah. So then you you know if you if you leave your your phone in a cab. And then you ring up at seven in the morning. You know, you want to make sure they haven't got a clause in there. Well, you didn't tell us uh, within thirty seconds. Of yeah, you that's right. It, so you, say, you should have called the bank within yeah, you know two whatever. hours of losing your phone. So well, well, I couldn't ring you because my phone was lost in the cab. You moron. And I'm smashed. It's the I couldn't same see. As credit card or anything. Anyway, it's 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 uh, as soon as you're aware of the situation, you try to correct. It. It's the yeah. same now. Like you know, if if it is a Say you wake up on a, a Sunday morning with a hangover and you don't know you've got it, you don't realise who you go to work Monday morning. You know, I just don't. I can't see. Go, I can't see a problem with a pin. I, I really can't. Tap your card. Yeah, what's a pin? It takes two seconds. Yeah, tap your card. Go for your life, but put a pin in. But you got a phone. Tap your phone. Put a pin in. But, oh, yeah. No, no. Anyway, no, tap me. your phone and pin exactly. It's just yeah. another just another number you got to remember. No, it's not. All <laughs> mine are the same. Or mine are 6742. Oh, Dolt, did I say that? So, uh, the problem is that... <laughs> bring up the bank quick, change it. <laughs> oh, the the pr biggest problem is most of the cards I have are work cards like company, credit card, company, fuel card, company, you know. So suddenly I've got 15 different pins that I have to have written down because I can't remember them all. Oh, you're just so a you're what's company more secure? man, Will. You're a company just man. Ring up, just, just ring up Steve Gibson ask him. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. What's more secure? Having all these pins written down, whether it be on my phone, whether it be my diary, w whatever, whether it be my wallet with the cards. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's more secure in that situation? Would it be easier to have 15 different ax codes on my phone and have them all in one place than have... That's why I still sign. Everywhere? 
That's why I still sign for my credit cards. I don't have to remember Jack. Well, no, but if you, if you get somebody's credit card and you wipe the signature off the back, you can put your own signature on it. So it's, yeah, that signing is the, the least. I don't know what cards you've got, but my cards don't rub out. Why don't you just put a chip in your arm? All right, let's in get out. Of, let, <laughs> There's something to be said for that too. <laughs> oh, yeah, put chips in there and people touching you there. What's going on it's, tonight? Right. <laughs> it's all like to pay for some pizza, please. You bend over. <laughs> Let me swipe the card. All right. Let me swipe the card. Exactly. <laughs> Show us your slot. Oh, dude. <laughs> now, let's Show just, us your swiper. Let's just... <laughs> oh, yeah, so that there goes our family-friendly rating on iTunes. <laughs> reminds oh, me of... It's still family-friendly, yeah, friendly, mate. It's one thing, but where do you insert it? Well, that's right. Insert. Where do you where do you put where do you punch in your pin number? <laughs> it reminds me of Dora the Explorer. You know, swiper, no swiping. <laughs> All right. <laughs> swiper, no swiping. <laughs> now, Eric, can you get on to uh, something else? Apple, uh, app, yes, Apple, I app will. Store uh, or whatever you got there, please. All right. Judge dismisses Apple trademark claims against Amazon's App Store. Amazon has succeeded in happy having Apple's false advertising lawsuit over its App Store trademark thrown out, which I think is fair enough. Yep. So I'm being objective here. I'm an Apple person, but that is a fair enough decision. In early 2001, 2011, Apple sued Amazon over the latter company's new App Store for Android devices, claiming the App Store name was trademarked by Apple and would cause confusion amongst customers. Well, duh, I don't think so. Uh, so you can read it in the show notes. Um, at the end of the day, Apple lost that one. We don't know if they're going to appeal on this or if there is an actual appeal allowed well, on I, this. I, I saw a couple of uh, stories come through about Apple losing some patent uh, cases. Yeah, I'm actually just reading that right now, actually. And one of them was the one the, in China. Uh, I'm not sure where it was. It was about the, the pinch and zoom and, and things like that. Okay. Yeah, so... Um, no, no. A Chinese court has just ordered Apple to pay um, to a million, you know, a million yuan, yuan which is 160,000, which is like nothing. But mm. um, hang on, 160,000. Um, hang on a minute. Wait, wait. 160,000. Yep, there's, there's 160. Hang on yeah. a second. There's another <laughs> 160. Uh, there's yeah, another exactly. 160. Um, but they've got to pay to, to eight Chinese writers and two companies who say unlicensed copies of their work were distributed through Apple's online store. So it's good to see that they, you know, <laughs> The award was the, the originally they were going for twelve million yuan, which is one point eight. So basically, ten percent of what they originally even one point eight is nothing to Apple. Like really, yeah, the no, court yeah. ruled that down. But I think yeah. I don't know. It looks. It seems to me that there's um, everyone's just gunning these patents, aren't they? They're just gunning them. And uh, yeah, and I just thought. But oh, not only that, everyone's after. Everyone's hmm. challenging Apple because they're the they're the um, the eight hundred pound gorilla in all of this. So they, mm. everyone's going for it. Yep. Uh, now, another story here I've got here, Windows 8. Now, the, for those of you who have downloaded the Windows 8 preview, it's going to stop working pretty, pretty soon. Uh, there's warnings. No, no, uh, no chance of me being affected by that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got the dev pack. so you, you Yeah, got... but it installed it. Yeah, well, true. <laughs> Uh, now, warnings of impending expiration will start showing up on January the 1st. That's already happened. So you, if you've still got a, one of these old pre preview things, get rid of it. Um, You're gone. All three Windows 8 previews, developer preview of September 11, the consumer preview of February 12, and the preview release expired January 15. So that's only a couple of weeks away. Experts, however, have figured out how to trick Windows 8 into doing a credible upgrade from both the release and consumer previews. So therefore, you can go down and buy the um, the upgrade pack. What for sixty, forty bucks or something? Go down, buy it. Yep, something like that. And then use the that up to um, yeah. Apparently, upgrade the preview pack. So if you if you if you don't get it off your system and you wait till after January thirty first, the discount ends. So the forty bucks ends, and you'll have to pay two hundred for it. So get in there Ouch. now. Mm. Get in there now. Do it. Do it. Even if you do it, or don't do it. Mm. Just yeah. get rid of it. Put just, Windows 7 back. Just do it. Even if you've got XP or uh, whatever else you've got, I reckon for 40 bucks, just put it, do what I do. Keep it in the box. You know, just put it away. Don't touch it. <laughs> yeah, do what Glenn does. Keep it in the box for <laughs> years and years and years. He does the same with computers too, so. That's right. Yeah. Years and years and years. I was years. only just I think, thinking, um, I was only just thinking I think it, today. A couple got, of things he bought, uh, you know, about 1987 are still floating in the box somewhere. <laughs> Oh, I can see one now. Commodore 64 and it's an original 
paper bag. I can see one on the shelf now. Front page, front page ninety eight. Still got the shrink wrap <laughs> on it. <laughs> Mind yeah. you, that's probably the best place for front page. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that oh. is the, you're right. Well, that is the best place. For, best place for it. PC anywhere. Uh, that, was, that, that was a good program. Oh, that, oh, wasn't oh. that fantastic for that's, about a mate, year? Hang on a minute. PC anywhere. That's that's. We're talking 1992 for that. Yeah. That um, only worked on uh, dial-ups, the early ones. Oh, Not yeah. even that. Remember they had the serial to serial PC anywhere. The, yeah, you had to oh, get yeah. the null modem. A copy of that. You had to get the null modem. Yep, the null modem cab. <laughs> right. I actually oh. had to do that. A few weeks ago, uh, over Christmas oh, at my uh, no. my one of my auntie's places, she had oh, a four at six, me. four at six desktop and a uh, uh, early IBM ThinkPad six eight six laptop, and the only way they would God. work would be null modem <laughs> and laplink. <laughs> oh, lap link, I remember. Lap oh link. no! Are you kidding me? Sorry, hey, did sorry, you... Will. I would have, I would have torched the house. <laughs> hey, it's uh, a wonder. It's a wonder you, you didn't. Your... Wonder you didn't ring me up for my copy of MS dot dot six point two. <laughs> you could have built a web page using front page ninety eight. I got, I got a copy. That's got Navigator, thank you. <laughs> oh, you love it. Oh, Navigator. Oh. But remember, I, I, I love Navigator. I used to love Navigator. Next gate gold. Oh yeah, baby. Yep. But the stupid Perfect. thing about front, that was good stuff. The stupid thing about front page because I had ninety seven, ninety eight, is that if you to use all the functionality, you had to have front page extensions installed on the server, so on your web host, yeah. which then that cost you an extra whatever dollars for it to a install. million dollars. It was just ridiculous. And it only was, worked on your website, yeah, and not only that, crazy, uh, if crazy. you used any other browser other than Internet Explorer, it looked like shite. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, Laplink, don't you love it? Now, uh, let's uh, go into... Uh, Shane's got a story here, video games. Something about video games? Something about... Uh... Uh, yeah, that is the one where um, they're getting a rating. So Yes. Parents will be better informed of what computer games to avoid after the introduction of an R18 plus classification yesterday. The system brings the classification... Computer games in line with the um, movies classifications, and yeah, it just goes on there that um, it's a state-based thing. Yep. Uh, most of the states have already passed the legislation introducing the system, although Queensland Parliament will not legislation until early next month. Yeah, there's a lot going on surprise, up here. Surprise, surprise. They got th- Queensland they, is they got, useless. They got things going on. They're they're busy. Will is well. Busy, busy. Now, now we're talking about useless. Talking about computers. they spent six. They sent what was it sixty million dollars implementing smart cards as driver's license, and then decided after they've changed half the people over, and oh, no, we're not going to use those anymore because it's too much work. And was this the new government introduced it or the old government? The the current government. Oh, did they? Oh well, no, actually, the old government introduced it. The current government carried it for a while. Hmm. They got half the licenses out and then said, oh, no, you'll still be issued with a smart card, but we're not going to actually use it for anything. Oh, well, we may, they may <laughs> do in the future at some time. But talking about video games, uh, Sony has stopped the production of the PlayStation 2. I would, I would have thought it was a natural progression. Really? I the... Well, I thought they stopped production of that years ago. Well, I would have no, thought... No, no, you when... can pick it up yeah. for like 100 bucks. No, but, that was, but they're still producing. That, well, they've stopped now, but I would have thought, yeah, yeah, like Eric, I think, well, once the 3 come out, it superseded it. No. What's the end point? Of, end of story. When the when the second one came out, they kept the first one around for five years. Um, so some facts but, ab- some facts about the PlayStation Two first went on sale in March two thousand. So now it's that's yeah. a thirteen year old little device. So that's old. That's older than XP. Or, I yeah, have no, one of those. No, I have really. the very first ones. It sold more than one hundred and fifty million PS Two consoles. So so that's that's quite a few. It's out. It outsold its replacement, which that is the PS3, for the first three years. So there you go. The PS2 is credited with being the best-selling game console of all time, and its wide use is also thought to have aided the popularity of DVDs as a drive for the discs. It was built into the machine. I think that's why I know a lot of people that uh, bought the PS2 mm-hmm. because of that. Yes, so that's probably right. And it does not mean that no more games will be, be produced. Apparently the games are still coming out, so that's good. If it's so popular, like trillions of people have got it, so good on them. And by ending production, Sony has fueled rumours, have stoked them up, the flames have spurred and and whatever, and is uh, fueling rumours that it's putting manufacturing resources towards the PlayStation 4. Well, they've got to do something, haven't they? Poor Sony. Now, they better get trouble. their act together. Yes. You know that the, the, there's two, thing, two things there that were missed, two major points. One is just after it was released, it was recalled. Because it had a weapons compatible 
controller chip in it that you could be used to control um, uh, surface wear missiles and oh, things like that. Cruise missiles. Uh, I, the one I have is actually one of the ones that was recalled, so that's how old mine is. <laughs> and also, um, did you take it back? I mean, uh, no. Um, so do you think also, that they've, they've recalled them? And, they, and, the, and harboring weapons. Yeah, so they've recalled them, and all the terrorists have gone. Oh, geez, we better take that back then. <laughs> yeah. um, we don't want no, that. Well, mine's actually even a little bit older than that because mine was uh, from a Sony promo that went to Melbourne be- six months before they even released. Yeah, okay. Um, and the other thing it didn't mention is the main reason it outsold the Xbox, which was its direct competitor at the time, was the the PS2 played DVDs out of the box, whereas the Xbox you had to spend an extra eighty dollars, I think it was, right, to yes. buy a adapter. Because Microsoft were too cheap to fork out for the rights to allow them to play DVDs out of the box. Oh, Microsoft, what's going <laughs> on? <laughs> now, uh, I've just got a little quick... Sony... Yeah, sorry, Shane. If Sony had the, um, the, the, best, uh, had the best console at the time, so they basically had a leg up on Microsoft, mm-hmm. what happened? How did Microsoft kind of overtake them? Bigger company always wins. I mean, look at the Sega Saturn was actually the best console out of a lot of them, and it disappeared. The Dreamcast was the highest spec console on the market when it was released. It it was basically what the Wii U is. It had a mini game controller and everything, and it went away. So just because you've got the best system doesn't mean jack. You know, because look at the Wii. Look at the Nintendo Wii. Yes, the lowest spec is. system that was ever implemented at the time, yep. and it sold more than any of the other ones put together. Well, I bought a Wii. That was my first modern uh, console, and uh, kids using it. Yeah, so mm-hmm. that's good. Uh, yeah, so look, I think, well, if you're casting your mind back, uh, Xbox, Microsoft was into the HD DVD, and was mm-hmm. Sony in bed with the Blue, yeah, Blu-ray, Blu-ray. weren't they? Yeah, so... Um, because it was, it was basically Disney versus everyone else. Hmm. Yeah. Um, oh no, sorry. It was it was Disney and the porno companies versus everyone else because all the porno companies wanted Blu-ray because they could make longer pornos. Yeah. Um, but everybody else wanted DVDs. Yeah. Which is why Blu-ray won because pornos wanted VHS, the porno companies wanted DVDs, the porno companies wanted Blu-rays, and look at the progression of the technology. It's exactly what they wanted, and why? Because they sell billions and billions of copies of everything they release. So what porno wants, porno gets. Okay, yep. now let, let's move on to... Look, I had an interesting story here somewhere. Um, I thought this one. We'll go the... I've got a... You know how the end of the year comes and you do the top things of 2012? Well, I don't want to bore people too much about all that. But I thought I'd get out the most pirated TV shows <laughs> of 2012. Why not? You know, because now here we go. The Game of Thrones tops the TV internet mm-hmm. pri- pri- piracy chart. Now, I'll put the chart up here for those on the in the lounge. Now, one episode of the series has racked up. How's this? 4,280,000 illegal global downloads. How they measure that, I have no idea, but slightly more than its estimated US television audience. So the level of piracy... <laughs> <laughs> now, if crazy. that doesn't prove to you there's an international market for TV shows and TV companies are too stupid to figure it out, well, this nothing is, will. This is what well, put it this way, Will. <laughs> if they charge a dollar, they've just yeah. made $400 million. That's it. Yeah, it, it's... Um, Idiots! Yeah, the level of piracy may be... I think I'm going to start a TV company and charge a dollar for shows. That'd be good. Uh, behind uh, the the fact that where we are, the level of piracy may be linked to the fact that TV company behind at HBO does not allow Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, or other US streaming services access to its programs. It, mm-hmm. it, it instead restricts them to its own HBO Go online product, which is only available to yeah. its cable subscribers. So that's what's oh, going yeah. on. how dumb is that? Which, which is people why people would pay for it off Netflix and everything else. Why don't you say, oh, what's going for us? He's throwing me two dollars ninety nine. Yeah. Times 100 million why, viewers. Hello, 600 million. Half, half the HBO shows don't go past the first season, whether they're good or not. Look at Alcatraz. Look at uh, a few others. Exactly, that, mm. because they don't have the audience. Yeah, yeah. yeah they don't have the in audience. In order to get because... ratings, they need an audience. In order to get ra- in order to get an audience, you need money. It's a vicious circle. Start <laughs> distributing it to other areas, yeah. morons. Well, they've got the audience, yep. but just not the paying audience. Now, yeah. outside the US, Torrent Freak noted that Australia was responsible 
uh, for mm-hmm. a disproportionate amount of illegal copies of the Game of Thrones and suggested this may have been because episodes were broadcast locally a week later than in the US. I don't know. Yep. You can wait a week, couldn't you, can't you? You have no. to download not when you Not when every every news site you go to, every news right, you yeah, pick up, true. every Too many ad spoiler you alert. TV, Tells you what's going on. You exactly. can't no, wait you can't. that length. Of, look at things like uh, the you new. You can't just cut um, yourself off from the world because everyone's no. talking about your show. Yeah, yeah. Right. Look yeah, at so what they do with Doctor Who. Watch it. Look at what they do with Doctor Who. They basically mm. released it at the same time. It was like a midnight screening here because they didn't want that to happen. And yeah. guess what? Virtually nobody pirated it. And yeah. everybody tuned in, so they got the advertising dollars. Yeah, exactly. Well, it was on the ABC. But yeah, well, but, yeah, but everywhere else they would have got advertising dollars. But look, I, I, I see next on the list, most pirated TV shows, uh, number one, Game of Thrones, number two, Dexter. Now, now yep. Dexter, I know over here, um, unless you've got pay TV, you can get Dexter, I think, pretty much the next night on the Showtime channel on Foxtel, which surprised now, me. Now, but not the first seasons. No, we're talking now. We don't, don't, yeah. live, don't live back then. But <laughs> don't forget, a lot of these downloads take into, like, if I watched one last night and I watched a new season, I'm like, what is going on? So I'm going to go back and I'm mm. going to download the first season, second season, so I catch up, so I know what's happening. So they're not entirely accurate with their figures in uh, per it's, episode. Yeah, it's not base. 400 million people, it's 400 million downloads. So it could be, yeah. each person could be downloading 10 shows. That's right. Mm. Yeah. But, um, yeah, other ones in the list is The Big Bang Theory, How I Met Your Mother. No, I don't watch any of these. Breaking Bad, The Walking Big Dead. Bangs. Big Bang Theory is good. You've got to watch yeah. Big Bang Theory. Don't yeah, you? it's yeah. hilarious. I'm up, I'm up to date with that, actually, as of last yeah. week. Home, watch it online. Homeland, House, <laughs> Fringe and Revolution round out the uh, top ten. Now, but, the other one you've got to watch is Arrow. Channel, Channel 9 are bringing it out in 2013. They won't say when, so it could, it could be next, next Christmas. Yeah. I already watched season one. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, okay, right. <laughs> um, it's like, uh, but some shows we don't even get. There's, there's one I'm watching at the moment called, called Leverage. That's I a great show. Had, yeah, it's fantastic. I think we had half a dozen episodes over here of the last like, series. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's like... And it's got, it goes 22 episodes, Will, per season. Mm. Yeah, and there's like seven seasons. Yeah. You know, and and we, we haven't seen show. it, and when... And when they put it on, it's they put it on here, then they put it on again three weeks later, and it's all disjointed. That's and that's the wrong they one. Treat us, they treat the viewers like mugs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and then good. they complain because their shows are being stolen. Uh, yeah. Worse than that, they complain that people aren't tuning in. We're not tuning in because your programming is unpredictable. Yeah, I, I, I'm so with that. We make it humans like to be predictable. Is mm. Elementary on, on TV people. yet? What's that? Is Elementary on TV yet? No. The American. Um, the, um, Doctor Who thing, isn't it? Uh, no, no, no. Sherlock Holmes, the American version. No, it's of Sherlock not. Holmes. No, it's, no, no, mate. And it's uh, give it two years. Give they've, it two they've years. They've got like four, four or five episodes out now, and they're brilliant. But is why it, are they not on TV? Are we only? Are <laughs> we? Only, it's being advertised. But see, the thing is, it's so disjointed. We like to be predictable. I remember five years ago, maybe shorter than five years ago, you could sit down on a Tuesday night and watch an episode of something. And the following Tuesday, you could watch the next episode of that same show, and yeah. there was some continuity. Hmm. Now you tune in Tuesday, and I think, hang on a minute, it's yeah. not Big Bang Theory's not on; it's something else, or it's something, else, or it's Big Bang Theory, and it's a repeat from three seasons ago. And what they makes it just, worse? The programming is the pits, and they're and scratching their heads, wondering yeah. why they're losing money. Channel Nine are scratching their heads, wondering why they nearly went broke. Yeah. I just told and you why you nearly worse, went broke, you morons. <laughs> is every station has five channels, and they, other than, mate and one and a couple of others. For the most part, it's the same thing on every channel. You have five channels, use five channels. There's a massive free-to-air push. There's all these ads about how like free-to-air is better than pay could, TV. Could you imagine if each of those five <laughs> channels was consistent? They would yeah. have a booming business. Absolutely. Because people could sit down with, with, with certainty and go, Sunday night, I'm watching a Disney movie on Channel 7. Yeah. Like yeah. they used to 20 years yes, ago. that's right. That's, that's right. Right? right? Not Every like, Sunday night, and they made yeah. heaps of money. Mm. Oh, oh yeah, seven thirty t- Sunday night Disney t- movie. While we're on to while we're on videos and stuff, I'll tell you what I went and saw at the the theatre last night. All the theatre, <laughs> the movies, the theatre, the theatre. Uh, last night I went and saw Skyfall. Oh. That's great. Oh, don't tell me about it. That's I want to see it. Oh, don't do yourself I've a heard, favour. I've heard it's good. Yeah, no, go and see it. Go to the th- theatre. I'm gonna see, see it. it. If you go to the theatre, one must yeah. see that movie. I will I say, just yeah, watched. Uh, spoiler alerts. We yeah. watched the other day uh, Abraham Lincoln Vampire. Song. Oh, that's a great show. 
<laughs> it's oh, better than I expected. It got really oh, yeah. panned, and then I watched <laughs> it, and I thought, you know what, this is pretty good. And now there's actually an actual Abraham, Abraham Lincoln movie coming out, and I'm like, it's going to be a letdown. <laughs> it will. When do you, you guys the end get of it, you'll time? Be going, Hang on a minute. Where's he didn't vampire? kill any vampires. <laughs> when, do you, when do you guys get time to watch all this rubbish? Uh, oh, I, I had you. a couple of hours over Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you, look, look, but we have been on holidays, mate. Yeah, true. But look, I won't, I won't spoil. I won't say anything about the movie except that there's a lot of big bangs, and you need to see it at a theatre if you can't. I would highly yeah. recommend not, not, you go. Not, not a, yeah, big screen. All right. Yeah, good. highly recommend you go and see it on the big screen, and take lots of popcorn. All right, now uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you'll need it. You're hungry. Now, Shane, what's going on in hotel rooms around this country? Getting ripped off. Oh, tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> when did this start? Nobody told me. Oh, really? I'm surprised. <laughs> how are we getting, uh, how, yeah, how are we getting um, ripped off? It's because we're being we're paying too much for our um, internet access in hotel I think rooms. You're, I think you're paying too much for your hotel room. Number <laughs> four. Well, yeah. Well, start there. Based on that, let's let's start with the hotel the room bar. price. You know, if I, if they half the price on a hotel room, I could cop the thirty five bucks a day for the internet. Oh, <laughs> I want more than that. I stayed at a little three star apartment complex thingy. And it was one hundred and fifty dollars a day for internet. What? A day? What did, did Frank Sinatra show up? <laughs> Paid eighty bucks a night for the room and one hundred and fifty bucks. <laughs> yeah, Frank. Frank's an- in your car. Frank Sinatra <laughs> personally plugs it in for you. No, God, I, I, I walked did, did, did out, I Beyonce walked come out, out with no clothes on for that amount of money or what? <laughs> I walked out Never. the front door and logged into McDonald's for free Wi-Fi. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> but why wouldn't you? It's crazy. But anyway, let Shane uh, tell, the, tell his story. We digress. Um, Go on. Yeah, well, yeah, that's about it really. <laughs> Not oh. much to it. <laughs> we just <laughs> told the story. <laughs> well, let, let, let me. hotels charge up to 35 <laughs> bucks a day to use their internet um, on top of the room rates. And um, I mean, as we're talking before the show, I was you know, telling you guys that I'm going to America in October, and all the hotels over there, internet free, kids free. Mm. Um, Most yeah. of them are free. Just read the fine print. Mm. So you got here. Yeah, in, okay. You got here. Uh, just as a just bringing out a few random random ones here. Uh, P- Park Height, twenty nine dollars a day uh, in Sydney. Crown Metropolitan, twenty five dollars a day in Melbourne. Um, Brisbane, twenty five. Look, there's a, all around. Yeah, all around thirty bucks a day. It's it's just why aren't people using their phone? Why aren't they tell? What, what's going well, on? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes if you're in the middle of an apartment complex, a apartment where? complex, an you account. can't um, <laughs> because you don't get signal. Um, but I, I mean, there, I have been to some places where they've had free Wi-Fi, but the problem is it's the Wi-Fi is behind the back of the restaurant in the shed down the back, and um, you've got to go and sit, you know, on top of that fence post to get signal. Mm. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, I'll give you a tip. Uh, I was out on a job the other day, and they said my internet's slow, and they, you know, how Telstra was banging on selling selling people the three G wireless. Uh, 3G modem things to connect to the net. Yep. Oh, why? And anyway, it was really poor. It was, you know, it was like one meg down, if that. And um, I said, you know, you can move this <laughs> router around, this modem around. It's wireless. So because when I rocked up to the joint, my phone said LTE, and I got into this bedroom. Yay. Yeah, and I went into the bedroom, and it was just nothing there, no 3G. So I said, why don't you move it out near the kitchen? Because as I come up the steps, I got LTE, so it's probably a better signal, and it went fine. So that's a little tip. Little tip for <laughs> for new people, young listeners out there. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I, they do have the advantage if you've got like a 10 gig data on that one device and you have seven devices, you know, it's better than getting two gig on every device. You know, mm. it works out cheaper. But Now, yeah. um, what was I going to say? I was going to say, I was going to move on to something else. Eric, what's happened in, yes, Par- in Gay Paris? Well, I don't know. I'll tell you in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the Parisian Apple Store robbed of 1 million euros in merchandise on New Year's Eve, as you do. So it's about $1.3 million. They must have been um, in there a while to get that much. Oh, there's probably more than one of them. You just <laughs> drive a truck to the loading dock and put a couple of pallets in the back. Well, you, you're off. Uh, mm. The Apple Store Opera in Paris, France, was robbed by four masked gunmen. Gunmen, they had guns. On New Year's Eve, the thieves made off with one million euros worth of iPhones and iPads. I see little items. That's easy. Go for it. Mm. Mm. That's a Christoph, lot of... Christoph Kreppen, 
An UNSA police union official told the Parisian newspaper that the four hooded and heavily armed criminals made their move very quickly. Most of the police forces were being mobilised to monitor the Champs Elysees, so the robbers have clearly a benefit from this opportunity to strike. Well, best time to rob a place. Everyone's in the new. Hey, 1.3 million people on the harbour on um, New Year's Eve. Hello, empty houses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. So they just, they just thought, well, mm. where are people going to be tonight? Over mm. there. Well, we're going to be over here. I'll, so, tell you, I'll tell you what also. There you go. I'll tell you what also happens on New Year's Eve when you go to the harbour. My cousin uh, took his boat down there, put the boat in. They went and put <laughs> their vantage point like two days before or whatever. Uh, they come back, get to go home, no car. Trailer was left, which was nice. <laughs> <laughs> the car had gone. So, yeah, you got to oh, watch it, don't you? a bit rude. Oh, oh, tell me. Yeah, you got to watch these things. You, so if you go to the harbour, if you go anywhere for a couple of days, you know, put a chain Hello, around your wheels that, or something. Like, you know, Summer, that's the biggest like car show in Australia. Um, a couple of years back, one of my friends went there. They were an entrant in the show on Shine and all that sort of stuff. And they went to uh, went out that night. And they come back, and their car had been taken out of the uh, out of the compound. Yeah, it's rubbish. It's so, rubbish. So yeah, someone well, wants it, they'll take it. Yeah, how's this? I was talking. Look, I, I um had a friend come over from Thailand, listens to the show. He's been listening since uh oh since since the good old days with Mark. So hi, Steve. And he come over. And I went out for a coffee with him, and we're talking about because the the shopping center was packed. This this has got nothing to do with tech. It's just a story. So the shopping center was just packed. You know, uh, c- couldn't get a car park anywhere, but we finally did. So there was somewhere. So we finally did get a car park. But he was saying that uh, over in Thailand, there, um, he said he said if I was in Thailand now, I would park like so across behind two of the cars, if you know what I mean. So you got two cars in a car parking space. You double double park. He would so park just behind the two cars. You know, so they've they've parked nose in, right? So he would park yes. over across the back of two cars. Yeah, so like tandem parking. Yeah. So the first guy couldn't get out unless the other two got out of the way first. That, yes, yes, something like that. And I said, well, what, do you, I said, what happens if you come back and the guy wants to get out and your car's there? And he said, well, over there, you just got to leave your car in neutral. And they push it out of the way. And they push it out. They push it. <laughs> Crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. What's going on, Steve? Crazy. But anyway, uh, that's what happens over there. Now, what is happening? Steve Jobs is not paying, or his estate's not paying bills. What's happening with that, Eric? Oh, well, he did pay the bill. His super yacht was free to leave Amsterdam Port on Monday. Oh, that's been... After the late Apple co-founder's estate paid a deposit to resolve a dispute with designer Philip Stark, Philippe Stark, who had had the yacht impounded for, um, I think they were arguing about the bill. So, he paid an amount of money. His brother's not like Tony Stark, by any chance. No, I thought that too, but it's a different spelling. Oh, I was going to say, because you want a Stark involved with Apple. Because let me tell you, <laughs> if Tony Stark and Philippe Stark were related and they built this boat, they might as well just take over the world, let's face it. <laughs> right? Yes, with build... money's, money's bo- uh, uh, Apple's money behind them. That's right. So the vessel, they call it a vessel, it's not a boat, it's a vessel because it's massive, mm-hmm. costs 100 million euros to build. 127 million dollars. Take that, James Packer. That, yes. that just pisses all over your boat. <laughs> James Packer's got a dinghy. <laughs> He's sitting in, oh, God, how are you feeling now? Oh, dear. Now, so anyway, they, they, they've paid a deposit to the, and they're obviously uh, still talking about uh, how much left is to pay. I, I know where they got the deposit from. They, uh, Tim Cook got a uh, pay cut. He went down from $4 million down to $2 million this year. Oh, so that's poor where boy. They, they, they pulled $2 million out of his uh, salary. Yeah, but he well, got... that must have paid for about one <laughs> tile on the starboard port <laughs> pound thingy there. But look, I don't know. Like, I don't know anything about Mr. Stark or anything. I don't want to cast any aspersions towards him or anything. But, you know, as I read the story, it was going on that he owes, uh, that the heir, Mr. Jobs' heirs owed 3 million euros of a $9 million euro fee for the project. Now, I don't particularly think that the money is the issue. They've got, they've got so much money. They're not... For three million euros, you think they want they want to go? To this oh, they trouble? would be squabbling over that. This would have paid if they thought they owed it. They would have paid. Yeah. So what I think? Yeah, thinking... there'll be a legitimate reason whether it's a, a cock up in the the estate mm. or... or or some people have sometimes have a bad habit of going. Oh, he's dead now. They're not going to know whether he's a That's... legit bill or not. So I'll I, just send him one. I was leaning mm. more towards that because as mm. you, as you read as you read on in that story, Mister Stark called in the debt collectors and had the yacht impounded, as Eric was saying. Uh, wasn't allowed to leave Port Amsterdam. 
Uh, Robert Klassen, a lawyer representing Mr. Stark's company, Ubic, told Reuters News, or Reuters, however you, which side of the pond you come from, agency that the boat would remain in port pending payment of law by the lawyers representing Mr. Jobs. Now, these guys, this is a quote from the lawyer for Stark, these guys trusted each other, so there wasn't a very detailed contract. So no, there everything you go. was a handshake. Yep. So, so he's just gone, hang on, he's dead. I can milk this. Yep. I'll get another three out of this. Because yep. you wouldn't think that um, the Jobs' heirs are just going to say, uh, well, three million. That's nothing to them. It's nothing. Yeah, but that's, yeah, that's beside the point. So there's obviously you something get, else. You don't get to be that wealthy by being that careless and just giving away mm. money without asking questions, right? Yeah, well, that's true. So you're not going to just give it away, but there has to be, would have had to mean another thing. So maybe there was something that was missed. But anyway, that's the story there. Uh, all right. Where else are we going? Oh, where I've got, we... Yes. I was going to say, I've got this one quick one. Uh, and I just, the, the, the headline got me. National Broadband Network helps Hello. elderly stay in homes. Project Boss said. I read this. Uh, it's uh, ridiculous. <laughs> Basically, that intelligent, you know, that really overpaid and highly intelligent Mr. Mike Quigley. Oh, um, yes. Yeah. Because of the name you know, Mike you know, you put him next to Stephen Conroy, they look like two of the guys out of the Three Stooges. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's not a lot different. Same haircut. There. You know, got the, Conroy's got the bowl haircut, what was his name? And then yeah. got the baldy. Uh, he can be Larry. Mo. And, and, Mo and, and Curly. Curly. So <laughs> Mo is, the, is, is, is Conroy with the stupid bowl cut. Yeah, and Curly is Quigley. And who could be the other stooge? And uh, oh, take your pick, the, I suppose. Our Prime Minister. Yeah. Um, and that cr- uh, with basically, cream. Quigley's basically going on saying that uh, once it gets introduced, you know, into elderly people's homes and into nursing homes and things like that, it's going to help because it's going to do things like obviously let doctors um, view patients you know, uh, with webcams and just to chat to them for psychological reasons and things like that. But also it's going to reduce things such as the home monitoring at the cost, which can cost you know $1,600 a year um, for, for the home monitoring, where as opposed to up to seventy-seven, you know, seventy-eight thousand dollars for a year for a nurse to come around every day. So if you can basically just check in with someone, see how they're going, make sure they're all good, which is all, to be honest, it's all a visiting nurse does, unless there's a, a reason for them to be there. But theoretically, um, that's fine. But yeah. what eighty-year-old biddy is going to know to ha- remember to click a button to check that in with the nurse? That was my point. <laughs> that yeah, was right. what I was about to say. Like it's so got, ridiculous. Yeah, they've got all these great things here. And the one thing they don't mention in this story is it is now no longer required for the operators of the NBN to replace the battery backup unit in the exchange at your house. It is yeah, now good. up to the Let the, me just get in my walking frame and walk out the front and replace it myself. You know, and that's it, exactly. And but they're not even gonna do that. And in an emergency they have the Rather the the pendants that they press the button or they're automatically yep. triggered if they fall, things like that. Yeah, yeah. Now, if in in the blackout, worst case scenario, there's a box that sits on the on the desk, um, and normally it will communicate over the internet if the internet's available. If the internet's not available, it will fall back to the phone. Yep. Now, under the NBN, the phone and the internet will be running down the same line. Yep. You will lose internet in a blackout unless you have UPS. However, yeah. your phone will function for, I think it has to be 12 hours off the top of my head. It's about 12 hours, um, yeah. It's about 12 same hours. Same as most hours, medical yeah. equipment has to function for 12 hours without power. Uh, the problem is that's only going to work for the first two years. After that, the battery in the, in the N-band is going to fail in the It, it, it the degrades, that's right, yeah. And, it, you know, and the biggest problem is the elderly people either aren't going to know or even if they know, aren't going to be able to afford because now we're going to have rip-off merchants that's charging right. $150 for a $37 battery. That's right. So, That's right. Plus, and on top of that, they're yeah. not going to remember. They're old. <laughs> so what's the That's bad? the whole so, point. Can, what, you're, allowed to, you're allowed to be forgetful when you're old. That's why you're old. Can I just um, yeah. back up a bit there for a second? Mm. So what is the battery for? You need a, to okay. have the NBN, you need a battery in your thing. You don't have a phone line. It's the same as having a naked ADSL or a cable. Um, but quite often you can have a separate phone line coming in or you, with cable you can have a separate phone line. Right. Under the NBN, everything is bought in over... goes through the NBN box. Over, yeah, over right. the NBN box. It's bought in in one unit. Right. Now, 
if if you have an, a medical emergency and you're you're you have a lot of people have a medical reason they have a dedicated phone line, oh, which basically right. means that it's yep. regardless of what your your thing is, you have a dedicated phone line specifically for that medical box, regardless of whether you want a phone or whatever. Yep. That's a cost carried by the curry, by the telcos. Uh, basically, a doctor says you need that, you need this, and they, you know, they yep. they give it to them. Yep. Um, with the NBN, because of the way it's structured the phone line will still come in over the NBN cable, regardless of the, there won't be a physical phone line yeah, coming in. There's no separate line. There's no, in, in, in other words, there's no, there's no redundancy. In other yeah, words. so there's a battery backup and effectively UPS that keeps that line active in um, an emergency situation. Yep. Now, the it. problem is, as with all batteries, they deteriorate and they require maintenance. Yep. The battery yep. itself is not expensive. It's a 17 amp hour sealed lead acid battery. It's about $18 to buy. Yep. Well, uh, like somebody like me in the industry, it costs us about eighteen dollars. We'd sell that for thirty-five. Yeah. Um, a fire company who will remain nameless, I know, sells those to businesses to put in their alarm boxes for one hundred and fifty dollars plus installation, and forty-five dollars <laughs> to the battery. Yeah, well, yeah, it's ridiculous. Now, yeah, so it costs them three hundred dollars to replace a fifteen dollar battery. Now, I'd like to know uh, from listeners or whatever, if you, if you ever get the chance, jump on the Facebook page, Aussie Tech Ed's Facebook page, um, and tell me what is the fastest LTE speed that you have had. Because I'll tell you, I got one today, which is the fastest I've ever had. Now, I went out to... Give it to us. I went out to Narang, and, which is North Gold Coast, and I got this... I did a speed test because I saw I had fo- uh, full bar... And <laughs> oh, you could make a joke out of that, couldn't you? But um, I, <laughs> <laughs> I won't. No, uh, I wasn't going to. I, but. <laughs> had, I had a full bar of LTE. <laughs> and so, and this, is that why you were? Is that why you were excited? And I was excited. Let me tell you. Now, what? What do you reckon? What do you reckon? You've seen marks in surface. Oh, I've seen. You've seen mine. I'm guessing yours, Glenn. We're talking. Uh, I'll give you up and down speeds here. Sixty-six forty-two. Well, you got the That's upload. You got the upload. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but seventy-six or seventy-four. Down. No way. See that? Can you see that? No. Then no focus. It's seventy-four point two three down. <laughs> I just did mine, and I'm an Ipswich switch on three G, and it's uh, thirteen down. And seven up. I can't see. It's not focusing. No. It's not auto focusing. Oh, there you go. That back. There we go. Oh, look at that. Seventy-four forty-two. How good's that? Now, can you beat it, that? It's a, no, I can't. If there's a way to get around them counting uploads, you could use your PC at home for a hundred meg download, and use your phone for a forty meg upload. <laughs> yeah, if you can split the line like that, it'd be brilliant. Yeah, but isn't that amazing? That's just crazy. And like, and when I've you go, look, well, I've, uh, you had a, you have full bars. I've got, um, I've only got a chubby on mine here, <laughs> and uh, a semi on, a semi on, <laughs> and I'm telling you what, I, I've got three bars. Oh, it just threw me out. That's soft. <laughs> that's 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 no good, Eric. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Oh, Come oh, on! No. You, I prime it. Half excited. You were you were Come you were on, fully excited. Hang prime on. it, Eric's got a prime <laughs> it. Prime Hang it to on, get it going. Prime, yeah, I'm He's getting the blue tablet. You're in it a few times. <laughs> All right, I'm doing oh. a nine nine point six down. Yep. On a three bar Telstra three G, and a five five twelve k up. Yeah. So the difference good. between three G and four G is just stupid. Hmm. Yeah, Keep it is. It good. Oh, yeah. So that's good. So if, if you can beat that, just send us in a screenshot, will you? Put up on the... If you can beat that, Glenn will give you his broken iPhone. I can no, beat you on Apple's the download, but not on the upload. Apple's no, I just got it back. Oh, yeah. really? You didn't even get to keep it? No, you don't get to keep it. No. How rude. That's what I reckon. That they'll, they'll, they'll fix that for 20 bucks. There's nothing wrong with that. You know with what? Anything. Your wife's coming in tomorrow. She's going to buy the same phone you just handed in. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. They're just out there just going, suckers. <laughs> All right, so yeah, don't forget the Facebook page. Jump onto the Facebook page. Um, you'll find it. Just search for Aussie Tech Heads. And I think we're... Has anyone else got any more stories? Because we're, we're at the way over the hour mark. But if anyone's got anything they want to sh- 
want to go. Uh, Optus 4G hits Adelaide. So look out there, Adelaide. It's coming. It's there. It's there. It's, it's, it's in there. So. Oh, the, the, big, the big news that Telstra had on their website this week, the Note 2 is available. <laughs> Just in case you weren't sure. <laughs> okay, now what else? And it comes, oh, actually, um, it quickly, it comes with the updates. That a couple of weeks back, we reported that there was a loophole, a backdoor into the the S3 and the uh, the Note 2. Um, these are being shipped basically as soon as you get signal. They update and patches that hole. So. Now, Shane pulled a story out here, iPad 5 to be released in March, so rumours are going crazy again, iPads 5s and iPhone 6s, and uh, apparently... Every three months you get the massive rumours, because that's oh, Apple's that's uh, new cycle tends to go quarterly. Yeah, so the new yeah. iPhone will be the iPad mini mini? No, this is the, this is the, new, <laughs> this is the new iPhone here, mate. <laughs> yeah, the iPhone maxi. Do we yeah. want to um, quickly talk about the story that I put up about um, America... Well... I don't know they are, but... Yes, yeah, go for that one. <laughs> yeah, going, going to the metric system? No, nah, yep, not going to do it. You know why? I've heard about that. You know why? They're not going to do it, Jack. You know why? Because they're too stupid. <laughs> There's that. So, just... <laughs> hang on, hang on. Just let, let Shane tell us what it's all about, because we all know the story. Okay, all right. So the U.S. Um, the U.S. has a love affair with the imperial units, height in inches, milk in quarts, weights in pounds, and yep. so on and so on. You name Stupid. it, it's measured in imperial. The only problem is imperial is dumb. The U.S. Did you the write US this article? Should, um, cast off those shackles and join the rest of the world embracing units that make sense. Uh, the U.S. is one of the few countries left in the world that um, don't use the metric system. Apparently, there's only about like three or four. Um, yeah, I think um, I think Africa is one. Um, probably the moon is another, in America. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's. I think they should. I think it's a good idea. Well, like the metric system. They do, bit... do use the metric system because I've got friends who live over there, and they they do teach them. They are educated in the metric system, but but they, the but it's just not. It's of... just not official. That's all. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. They don't. Um, um, but, but you know, I just hope they don't change the st- the spelling of it. You know how they change the spelling of everything? M E T R I K. Yeah, because it colours drop the <laughs> drop the U were too lazy. Tires. Uh, neighbor, T-I-R-E. forget that. Spell that bloody without the G H. And what's going on with checkbook? C H E C K. Check. Check. Oh. Yeah. What's Check. that? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, this will be it'll be a uh, metric spelt with a P. <laughs> <laughs> but you do realise that. Uh, perfect- <laughs> No, no, it'll um, no, it'll start with a P. It's just a silent one. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but but, um, it's, but what, it's what you that's what you brought up on, isn't it? Because well, like, even today, yeah. like, I, I'm obviously I'm full on metric. But then, but I know baby weights. I, I can still I can switch. Scale. I can switch. No, oh, yeah. I can't. I, I can. But, if someone said to me, "What's three feet?" I can mm. pretty much go, "Yeah, that's that." And what's yeah. third? What's twelve inches? That's that. Yeah. And what's what's a meter? Is that I can I can switch both ways. Yeah, well, you'd that's, find that's it, I'm, you, the, I'm the same because you'd find well, it easy my, to uh, measure out 12 inches, Eric, wouldn't you? Yeah, easy, mate. It's yeah. quite simple. Mate. It takes a couple of seconds. Yeah, sorry, Will. Everybody uh, I grew up with was was you know the older generation. It was only 12 inches tall, so it was easy. <laughs> I grew up with you know imperial, and for me, it's easier to to actually you know visualize an inch or a foot than it is to visualize you know a centimeter or whatever. And yeah. you know a lot of things that come out of China or England or whatever like that's that's a, a one one inch brush that's just what they're called regardless of where they come well, from what about the TVs brush. everyone says yeah. 40 inch 40 inch yeah. TVs 55 inch yeah. TVs I, I I got a 55 inch plasma I've also got a hundred and whatever it is 118 centimeter or something I'm like yeah, I don't know yeah, what that is like, I don't know what it is in 55 right. inches it's 40, 40 <laughs> inches 101 yeah See, I don't you know, know that so either. it's like I'm yeah TVs on the inches, but everything else metric. Babies. What about height? Inches. When someone says someone says how tall is he? Oh, about six foot three. Yeah, I'm better yeah. with heights in feet and inches than I am yeah. in centimeters. Mm. Yeah. But even in the the automotive industry, cars like when you're talking about exhaust, you're talking about a two and a half inch exhaust. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, does that mean doing. they're going to go kilowatts instead of horsepower oh. with the cars? No, because England still uses horsepower. They drew. You're right. Mm. Actually, England is a bit. England goes. Yeah, they switch because they do. They've got you know, kilometres on the road, a hundred kilometres speed limits, blah blah blah. But on their mileage, it's miles per gallon. Yeah, yeah. It's and UK they'll, they'll, miles per gallon, which is a little bit different to the US miles per gallon. They'll do speed tests like a drag, and it'll be a zero to sixty <laughs> yes, time, miles. which is a zero to a hundred. Yeah. Yes. So they do both. <laughs> 
Yeah, they Canada swing both ways. Both. Swing Canada both ways. also yeah. speaks French. Mm. Yeah, well, anyway. Mm. So who knows? Interesting. Let's hope they do. Anyway, so. anyway, so this time next year, uh, metric will be spelt P Q R Z one T R I C. That'll be how that's how it's spelled. Intelligence, isn't it? Um, Too hard. The it just reminds me of an Archie comic I read back when I was like, you know, last week, seven or eight. <laughs> Um, and it had an argument between Archie and Jughead, and one of them saying, "Oh, I love the metric system." And the other between one's Glenn like, and no, Will, Archie, you know, so, <laughs> so like, it's not like it's a new debate for them. It's been going for thirty years. You know, oh so. yeah, longer. See, like, look in their currency; they still use, you know, pennies. Oh, you know what's the worst thing on the stock exchange? Instead of going, you know, shares close at twelve dollars fifty, the shares close at twelve and five eighths. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, it's out of control. Yeah, what's this five eighths yeah. business? And today, the Microsoft shares closed down one and a quarter, and well, uh, Oracle shares closed down three and seven eighths. Well, actually, like, it closed down three dollars eighty five, mate. Come on. Can yeah. you now, now, Eric? This is probably a question for you. Now, can you tell me? I, I picked up this calculator today. Now, I'll show you what it is. And is that is that your Galaxy Note calculator? Yes, that's right. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, it's, 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 that's just size envy. It's all it is. So, well, it's got now. Look, I'll show you this button. Just because mine's bigger than yours, uh, it actually isn't. I'll but show, anyway, <laughs> I'll show you this. Go on. I'll show you the button on it now. If you can see that, it's a five quarter button. What the hell's that? What a five quarter? Yeah, see? five quarters. <laughs> What's that? What the hell? <laughs> what is that? It's just a generic button for a device for a um, imperial. Oh no! What is it? The long one and a quarter. Google it. it. What's the, um, Google it. What's the five quarter button? Yeah, there you go. Well, can someone Google that for me? I'm pretty tied up here. <laughs> I've got. I got one of my too. I thought it was here just like go. that. I got it here. Long divide or whatever it is. Five quarters. That's why wouldn't they, why wouldn't they put one and a quarter? Why do they have to put it's five? It's that, isn't it? It's the same as the. What's the t the tick the um? That's square root. Square root. Isn't it the same as that? No. Well, if I no? go nine and then I push five and a quarter, it doesn't do anything. It gives me a little arrow. It's a rounding button. I'll read it out for you. The, it's called the cut button. It's for rounding the round for rounding rule could, for could, the la least significant digit. Could you the least spell that? The digit will follow the normal rounding rule five four percent. If the remainder is five or more, it rounds up. If it's four or less, it rounds down. Okay, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a same it's a rounding as em, it's emu emulating a till. No, no. If, so if I put in 15.635645 yeah. and, and I push that button, yeah, nothing happens. Well, you've got to push a function bu button first. Yeah. No, there's a little yeah, arrow. You probably have to press that you button. Probably press that that and, you probably press that instead of equals. Places. Yeah, you might press that instead of equals, no. you're right. So 15.6 plus 17.3. And 15.6 plus 17.3. 5.4. And it's a, <laughs> it's a little arrow up the top. Yeah. I just bought a broken calculator. I think, where did you find that? In an American store? No, Welcome it. to today in calculating machines. I found that in a shopping yeah. trolley. <laughs> <it in> <laughs> <shopping trolley. laughs> was, was that in the bargain basement <laughs> discount bin, Glenn? I found that at in Harvey the, Norman, I found in the next to the trolley. lap link cables? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it was actually in the shopping trolley outside of David Jones. But uh, <laughs> That's because they couldn't figure out how to use it. it so you didn't, hang on. So it you didn't pay for one. this. You, 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 you just picked this up. Yeah, I found it. <laughs> you found it? No, you, you didn't find it. You looked around and looked behind you thought, no one's taking this, it's mine. Yeah. You want to crack the back off that. There's actually a GPS located. There's a GPS. The, the fence going to be knocking on your door. Oh, that's what the five quarter is. I've just activated it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. They're coming. There's someone at the door now. <laughs> <laughs> he wants his calculator back. <laughs> right. Oh, they even was so good to just to peel the name off it. You know, I was only stuck on with Dicky Tape. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right. Well, now, I'll be back at school. We still oh, calculate because it's not too expensive. I've got to get the money I spent on the iPhone back somehow. <laughs> Come on. Well, 
<laughs> You're going about the right way. <laughs> Come on. <Yeah. laughs> the jail salary should pay it off in 25 minutes. Yeah, I think, I think number plates <laughs> pay 20 cents an hour. Hey, look, it was outside. It wasn't inside. It was outside. It was, it was abandoned. In a shopping trolley that was owned by the shopping centre. It was abandoned. Yeah. It was abandoned. This calculator was abandoned. Yeah. And, so, and so will you be at the bailiff's hearing. <laughs> no, sir. It's a Galaxy Note. Hello. Yes, that's right. No, sir. I think you're mistaken. <laughs> that's all right, mate. I'll give you a call when I need new number plates, and I'll give you the order. <laughs> all right. There's too much oh, frivolity. Dude. There's too much frivolity. <laughs> it's time to go. All right. So, um, uh, oh, geez. All right. So that's, that wraps up this week's show. Thank goodness. Now, uh, thanks for coming back and joining us in 2013. We appreciate your um, ears. That's okay. <laughs> we'll never speak to them and, again. So it's patience. <laughs> Now you can call. Gone off. forever now. Don't forget the emails: <laughs> Blen, Eric, Will, or Shane at AussieTechEds.com.au. You can reach me at Twitter, Aussie Tech Eds, Eric at Eric Franco, Eric with a K, Mr. Tompkinson for Will, Shane with a Y, 1973. <laughs> Don't forget to follow Aussie Tech News at Aussie Tech News on the Twitter for breaking news stories from our favourite sources. And don't forget the radio at aussietechheads.com.au forward slash radio streaming audio 24-7. Shows include us, The Den, and I Blind <laughs> Tech and more. So oh, there's heaps of that. Great. There's not a show called Us. It's actually called Aussie Tech Heads, just in case you're wondering. Right. And uh, anyone interested in doing... <laughs> Anyone interested in doing an indie music orientated podcast? Is we have the ever anyone left listening to us at this point in time? Uh, give me an email. Send me an email. I've got an idea. I'm going to start it. Uh, it's going to start probably this week. So uh, and then it, it can expand over any genre. And if you're interested in doing something, you don't have to really host it. I just want, want you to listen to some songs, and um, we'll put them. The, you just put them together, ten of them each week or whatever. Uh, easy, easy. So anyone interested in doing an indie music orientated pod- podcast contact me and don't forget Aussie Tech Heads daily published twice daily tech newspaper right onto your screen your iPad or your or your, or your phone uh, thanks Lounge thanks for joining us I know it's getting late down there in the southern states but thanks for hanging around thanks listeners and thanks viewers on the uh, on the on the YouTubes so until next week Will Eric and Shane goodbye thank you See you guys. See you everyone. We'll see you next week for another episode of Aussie Tech Heads. Bye bye.